Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid, and in this video I'm going to show you how to recharge an AC system. So for any kind of real AC work, you need a set of manifold gauges like this. Um, you can get these pretty much anywhere. They should be about 50, 60 bucks. They have these quick connect couplers. And these ones actually, these are automatic um, couplers. The, the manual ones actually have a valve on them. So once, once you hook them on, you turn the valve down and it presses the Schrader valve. These ones are automatic. These ones, when they lock down, they automatically depress the Schrader valve. And you'll notice the quick connect thing, it, it stays up when it's not connected. And it will only go down once you actually are on and connected on, on the valve. So that's kind of a, a cool feature, which I really like. So let's go ahead and hook these up to the high and the low sides. The red is the high, the blue is the low. So first thing we need to do is locate our high and low fittings. You wanna go ahead and locate your AC compressor and then just follow the lines back. You can see that there's an in and an out line. You can see right here as we follow the line back, we've got one connection. It's actually got the H for high. So I'm gonna remove that. And then over here, this one has the L for low. And I don't know if you heard that, there was a little wisp of uh, gases. That's actually normal. These things have O-rings in them and they're just, you know, it, just the nature of Schrader valves, they do leak over time and that's why these things have O-rings. They're kind of a secondary defense against uh, refrigerant leaking out. So that is normal. A little bit of leakage is normal. Make sure before you hook any lines up that both of the valves are closed on your gauge set. Make sure all the hose connections are nice and tight. You don't want any leaks because this thing will leak once you hook it up. So let's go ahead and hook up the high side. High side is the bigger one, low side is the smaller one. There are different sizes so you can't get them mixed up. I just press down until that snaps on. Hook up the low. So we have both valves closed, but we're still getting pressure readings. That's because both lines basically bypass that valve. They go right to the gauge. They're always live with the gauge. These, these valves on either side are what connect, the, this one connects the red line to the, to the yellow input line. This one connects the blue line to the yellow input line. So really the valve is in here. That's what's actually opening and closing. This actually goes straight through to the gauge all the time. Let's go ahead and start the car, turn the AC system on, see what the pressures read. Okay, so I wanna turn the fan on and I'm gonna turn the AC on and we should have seen the compressor click on and yes we did and these are our gauge readings while the ac system is on and working and as you can see this i'll tell you right now is low the high side should be between 150 and 200 depending on how hot it is and the low side should definitely be over 30 psi so the system's definitely low Without a doubt, we're low on refrigerant, and that means that there's a leak somewhere. So before I just fill this thing up with more refrigerant, I need to find that leak and repair it. Otherwise, whatever I put in is just gonna leak out again. So the way we do that is we inject UV dye into the system, let it run, and it will leak out wherever the hole is, and I can use a special flashlight to illuminate that. I'm gonna use this product to inject UV dye into my system. It comes with a little quick connect connector to just hook right up to the low side. So we need to do this while the AC system is running. And what you do is you connect this to the low port. And what I'm gonna do is pull back on this. It's another quick connector. I wanna make sure that I've got it on there, make sure I can't pull it back off. And what I'm gonna do is, this cap needs to come off. I'm going to, I'm gonna follow the directions. I'm gonna push the button down for three seconds to inject the die. Two, three. There we go. Simple as that. I'll kind of wait for the, the rest to sort of boil out there. Get sucked out. That should be pretty good. I'll put the caps back on. And we're just gonna let the AC system run. So I've been looking along these lines with my light and I can't really see anything except for right here where the cold valve is. And I think that's, that's basically where it's sprayed a little as I disconnected the uh, injector. So I don't know, I can't find any other leaks. I can't find any leaks of the compressor anywhere along the lines. And from what I can see of the uh, condenser, can't really see any dye there either. Maybe I suppose I could 
and clean the die away. I don't know if that'll work. Looks like brake clean's working pretty well to rinse the die off that. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the die out of out of the center. That's just not gonna work. The only thing I can think is that maybe that Schrader valve is going bad a little. Um, I had I had previously checked these pressures a couple days ago when I was kind of you know preparing for this video, and at that point when I removed the 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 cap, I heard some refrigerant leak out, and it's only been like I said a couple days since I since I had done that, and when I undid that valve a couple seconds ago while we were shooting the video. I heard that refrigerant hiss out again, and I, I wouldn't have expected that much to hiss out in just a couple days, or, or even enough to actually cause a hiss, which makes me suspect that valve. So because there is still a little bit of refrigerant in this system, I need to go and get this evacuated by a professional. It's illegal to discharge coolant into the atmosphere, so go get it done by a professional. You can do everything else yourself. You can recharge it and all that stuff yourself, but you have to get it discharged by a professional. All right, I went and got the system evacuated and it is reading as empty now, which is good. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the charge line to my vacuum pump. Turn it on. And we'll open up both ports all the way. You can see that we're drawing a vacuum on the system. You're not gonna get a perfect vacuum at least I'm not going to get a perfect vacuum, especially with my old pump here, but it'll be good enough. If you're not drawing any kind of a, a decent vacuum, you might have to change your pump oil. You want to let your system vacuum down for about at least 30 minutes. It's been about 30 minutes, so I'm going to close both valves. Shut off the pump. And I'm just going to let this sit now for... I don't know, 10, 20 minutes, make sure that the vacuum just stays where it is. If that needle goes back to zero, we know there's a leak somewhere. So it's actually been about two hours, had to go to two different parts stores to get a couple of parts I needed. So it looks like the vacuum has held, which is good. I think that proves by process of elimination that it must be the Schrader valve. Pretty certain that it's gotta be these Schrader valves that are bad, uh, mostly because it's, it's Schrader valves that actually are the most common failure for an AC system. They just go bad over time. That's why they sell little kits like these that come with replacement um, valve cores and a little valve core tool and actually new caps as well because you just want to have new O-rings if at all possible. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the old core and install the new one. So this is what a valve core tool looks like. It just has this little shape like this and you just kind of put it down in there. I think I still have vacuum in this system, but that'll leak out when I pull this valve core out. Just put it down in there, unscrew it. Okay, so that's the old valve core, and this is the new one that came in the kit. Obviously a different one, so bummer. Looks like I got the wrong ones here. I'll just take my old one over to uh, Napa and see what, uh, see what they can do for me. All right, I got the correct replacements from Napa. The guy actually showed me a picture of uh, five different kinds of valve cores. So I, I think it's definitely recommended you take your old one to Napa or wherever to uh, find your correct replacement part. I guess I'll just get this other one out of here. Might as well replace both, you know? All right, so I'm just pulling down a quick vacuum right now. Um, I, al I don't need to do it for 30 minutes. Already did that before, already dried out the system, dried out the desiccant. So now I just needed to just pull a quick vacuum, make sure all the lines had vacuum in them. So if you're in the rest of the country, you have these style cans available where they're sealed on the top. You need one of these adapters. You basically, you loosen it all the way out and you screw it down, then you tighten it all the way down and that pierces the can and seals it at the same time. And then when you open, when you back it out again, that's what releases the gas. But I'm here in California and we have these new cans now that have, they sort of have their own Schrader valve in them. And so now you need a, yet another adapter in order to use these cans. And that just kind of screws on and adapts to this older style thing. Now, now for me in California, when I put this end on, I have to make sure that this is all the way down. 
and try to do this quickly. Yeah, okay, that was good. So it's all the way down, it's sealed, ready to go, ready to hook up to this line. So if you're wondering about um, adding oil, I'll tell you on my system that there, there wasn't much of a charge left. So the guy told me that barely any oil came out. Um, if, if oil does come out, if you had a relatively large charge when the guy vacuumed down your system and, and you know, you could get, I guess, between an ounce or two of oil that comes out, that's, that's really just the, the oil that's in the lines in the rest of the system. Most of the oil is in the compressor. That's what the oil is for. So it's not as if when you go and get your system evacuated down, that doesn't pull out all of the oil that's in the compressor. It just pulls out some of the oil that's in the lines and, the, and it doesn't make the oil evaporate or anything. The refrigerant evaporates, water evaporates when it's under vacuum, but the oil, the boiling point is still too high. So the oil is still a liquid. And the reason it comes out is just through the force of air that's rushing out of there. So that's why, you know, a little bit of oil will come out, but you know, most of the oil is still in the compressor. I think that's what confuses a lot of people. You know, they'll get their systems evacuated down, especially when they're doing a conversion from R12 to, uh, R134, they'll, they'll think that they need to put, you know, the prescribed amount of new oil into their system, even, at, even after it's all been evacuated or whatever. And I think they, they end up getting too much oil into their whole entire system in that case. When you're doing one of those conversions, if you want to change your oil, you've just got to drain it from the compressor. You got to pull the compressor out and drain it, then add the new oil in. But anyway, don't have that problem. Not very much oil leaked out, so I'm all good. I'm just going to screw this thing on attach it and we want to bleed this so there's air in this yellow line right now right so i'm going to open this up somewhat all the way and what we want to do is bleed the air out of this line you do that by opening this up until you see well we should have seen it it might not be all the way out here that should be enough. So uh, it is illegal to uh, vent coolant into the or refrigerant into the atmosphere, but there's an exception for when you're, you're uh, bleeding your lines. So that was legal what I just did. To charge your system, you only open the blue side. That's the only side that you ever open. Never open the high side. So I'm opening this up all the way and just letting it fill. I'll just kind of let the pressure equalize until it just it's not going up anymore. You need at least, I believe it's 25 or 26 PSI in the system before the compressor will turn on. There's a low pressure switch that prevents it from turning on if there's not enough refrigerant in there. So it looks like we're up around 30, which is good. What I'm gonna do now is start the engine. We're gonna use the compressor to draw in all of the refrigerant. And I'll just be kind of turning the can upside down, back and forth, you know, upside down and right side up a couple of times to just get all the refrigerant in there. It takes about five minutes or so. So let's turn the car on. I've already got the AC turned on. So you can see the compressor kicked on. Pressure's dropped, the high side will be building. And I'm gonna take this can and shake it around, turn it upside down. As you can see, more coolant goes in, pressure goes up. The compressor then pulls it into the high side and that's why the low side goes down. Can gets really cold. Uh, if I didn't mention it before, the sticker on the hood of this vehicle says that it takes, uh, I believe it was one pound, nine ounces of refrigerant, which works out to 25 ounces. And I've got two of these 12 ounce cans. So that's 24. That should be, that should be enough, honestly. I don't think that extra one ounce is gonna matter. The pressures, by the way, should be between 30 and 40 on the low side and between 150 and 200 on the high side. You can feel that this can is pretty much getting empty. I believe it is empty, almost empty. Okay, yeah, I believe it is empty. So I'm gonna shut off my, my uh, low side. Very, very important that you shut this off before you disconnect your can. If you don't do that, you are screwed. <laughs> You're gonna draw air into the system. So I'm uh, 
closing this down. No way to avoid that. Got my second can. I made sure that my uh, my thing is all the way down so it's sealed. Let's connect this sucker up. We'll open it. Make sure you don't over tighten the uh, yellow the yellow uh, line. <laughs> There's an O-ring in there. You don't want to crush it. So just open that up all the way. Now I'll bleed this line again. Just let a little bit of the air out. And I'll open up my low side again. Again, we're just... Uh, Upside down, right side up. See the high side pressure is going up to 200 almost. It's looking good. I think the can's about half full. Still at around 32 PSI on the low side, that's good. Around 200 on the high where I want it to be. I think it's going to take this whole can. I think we're pretty much almost empty. In fact, I think we are empty. So I'll close off that low side. Close my can. Again, no way to avoid that. So there we go. Those are pretty much the pressures you want to see, though. I'll try to find a chart as well. See if I can find a chart online. Because um, depending on what the temperature is outside, the pressures are going to be different. So there we go. About 44 degrees. Super duper cold. Really awesome. Go ahead and shut the vehicle off. Remember to replace your caps. I tried to use those new caps that I got in that kit, but they are the wrong, wrong style. So I'm just continuing to use the old ones. And now you too can recharge an AC system like a boss. Thanks for watching.